Kia ora, Mr Speaker. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, might I say from the outset that I'll be supporting this bill. Uh, despite all my uh, concerns around uh, the overuse of alcohol and the, the effects it may have on, um, on people, I, I still believe that uh, people do have the right to go and watch the All Blacks at a bar or wherever it may, may be, and uh, I support that. I'd just like to touch on a few things that the previous speaker raised, such as the, uh, the pride of pulling on the black jersey with the silver fern and running out onto the field, and uh, I have no doubt whatsoever that he was talking about the parliamentary Golden Oldies rugby team. And I'd just like to make, uh, make special note of the, the uh, awesome effort that uh, his, or our colleague, his colleague uh, Alfred Nuttall, made on Sunday uh, out there on the field. Uh, you know, he put everything... The, the whole time he was out on the field there, he put everything into it, uh, showed superb skills, levels of fitness, uh, and uh, I'd just like to congratulate Alfred and uh, acknowledge his contribution on the field the other day. Um, I think it's important that people are able to watch the, uh, the games live uh, and at a pub. Uh, there's a saying in our household that there's no point watching a replay of a game because uh, yelling at a replay never affects the outcome of the game. So it's important that people get the, the opportunity to, uh, to watch it live and, and to, to enjoy it live. I also um, acknowledge a point that uh, Grant Robertson made earlier, that people would probably have, uh, have a hangover more from coffee and, uh, and bacon and eggs rather than alcohol, because many of the games are going to be played uh, in the morning between 6 and 8 o'clock, where most people actually won't have been out all night drinking and then wanting to watch the game. Instead, they'll probably get up early and go down to the local pub, probably as a family, go down, have breakfast, have um, coffee, have bacon and watch the game and enjoy it in a quite sensible, in a quite sensible family uh, uh, situation. Um, <clears throat> Notwithstanding, there will be people that, that do want to go there for a drink, and I know a district court judge up in the north there who said that uh, uh, if alcohol was to suddenly vanish from New Zealand, 90% of his work would disappear along with it. So I do acknowledge the, um, the comments and the concerns that the Green Party do have about, about this. I don't really think that the... Um, that the problems will be as bad as they make out. I think most, New most people, most New Zealanders will want to go and watch the All Blacks games, and there's seven All Blacks games. You know, um, Fiji versus, um, I don't know, Namibia or, or games like that, I doubt that there will be a lot of people who really get um, themselves excited and, and drunk over the outcomes. Uh, you know, people may have, a, have a, uh, a slight interest in the games, but most people would actually just stay at home to watch those games rather than uh, going out. Maybe the South Africans, when, the, when they're playing, there's a large South African community, say, on the North Shore. Perhaps they'll go down to their local pub. But look, I, I really don't think that they'll be... Uh, the majority of people will be there uh, just trying to get sloshed. Uh, you know, I think that most people will just be uh, quite sensible about it and, and enjoy the occasion for what it is, as um, David Bennett said, that this is a, an occasion that comes around every four years. It's a celebration of of what it is to, um, part of what it is to be a New Zealander. Our country has, uh, you know, developed, uh, the All Blacks have, have been part of our, our culture right uh, from the 1880s when they first started out, 1905 when the original team uh, uh, left and, and toured Great Britain. Um, the 3-0 loss to Wales was one of the saddest days of my life, I have to say, and I'm struggling to get over it still, along with the 49, 1949 whitewash against the Springboks and um, the 71 loss to the Lions. Um, they still really, really cut and... <coughs> order, order, order. Just maybe, Ma Bill? Bring it, bring yep. it into the bill, Mr Speaker. <coughs> Oh, yeah, when we're talking rugby, you know, I tend to get um, a bit carried away there, but... However... Um, so, with the eligibility for being allowed to, um, to open, the, the bill would apply to on and, and, and club licensed premises that intend to and do televise the Rugby World Cup matches. Um, the select committee deliberated over limiting the number of games that, be, that could be screened but decided against such a restriction, so all the games will be 
will be shown, not just, uh, I think it was going to be limited to 16 initially, and now all the games are going to be shown live. You know, I just think it's sensible for the reasons that I outlined earlier, that um, there'll be some, shall we say, minor nations that are going to be playing, and I just really don't expect thousands and thousands of New Zealanders to be pouring out into the pubs and restaurants, uh, pubs in the morning, uh, at, to, and getting all excited and, and uh, overcome with emotion watching those games. Um, if, there's, if anyone has, uh, any outlet has uh, um, breached their licence, uh, licence premises that have had their hours varied in the previous 12 months under section, section 280 of the Act are ineligible for the provisions of the bill. That is, the premises have been sanctioned for breaching their licence. They won't be allowed to, um, to open. Um, as, a, as proposed in the original bill, licensees would have to notify their DLC and the police seven days before each game uh, they wish to open for outside their normal licensing hours and they won't have any appeal rights. There, there is one concern that I did see on the news tonight that there uh, could be some, um, due to the timing of some games, I think in the, in the last weekend that uh, premises may be allowed to be open for some 60 odd hours. Uh, it has that potential. I, I, I'm not sure uh, where Paddy Gow was going with that one or whether uh, whether premises uh, have to close for a uh, certain amount of time in between games, but uh, according to the report on the news tonight, uh, that the, some premises could be, could be allowed to be open for some 60 hours, that would be a concern. I, I don't think that uh, that uh, 20, you know. Um, that premises should be able to be open for that amount of time, and I hope that isn't an anomaly that's been allowed to creep into um, uh, creep into this bill. Um, licensees um, would be required to close for the sale of alcohol 30 minutes after the end of each game. However, if if uh, the games are uh, close together, that may uh, not actually be the the case. So I'm just uh, I do have questions around that. Um, it says the licensee may remain open if the game starts within licensing hours. If a game starts within two hours after a premises, norm, premises normal licensing hours end, the pre, then the premise may have their licensing hours extended through to one hour after uh, the end of each game, which is basically allowing people just to finish up their drinks and to, uh, and to move on. Um, th there were concerns around noise management and... and uh, um, premises wouldn't be allowed to have music blaring if the, if the police came in to check what's going on and people were there dancing and raging with the television on in the, in the corner. Uh, that wouldn't be allowed to happen and the premises would be closed. Also, uh, the disposal of um, bottles. Um, uh, I don't know if people have uh, had to clean up after, after a party when there's a number of uh, beer bottles to be emptied and they all get dumped into a, a bin at the same time. It makes a hang of a record and if uh, the premises was near uh, enough to, well, even apartments in the city, then it's uh, quite a record, even if you're up a few floors up. Um, the one-way door policy will apply as normal, but will not apply one hour before, during, before, during and one hour after each notified game. Licensees who do not comply with the terms of the bill, section 259 of the Sale and Supply of Alcohol Act sets uh, the infringement fine for the offence at $250 or $5,000 if it goes through to, to uh, court. Um, licensees who have been granted special licences can choose whether they want to operate under the, that licence or under the provisions of the bill. Licensees may still apply for special licences if they do not wish to operate under the provisions of the bill. The refunding of special licences made redundant by the provisions of the bill would be determined by the relevant local authority. Mr Speaker, uh, uh, before I conclude, I think it's uh, timely that we actually just wish the All Blacks the best. I know they're being named here in Parliament in uh, a couple of days' time. And, um, you know, uh, as the, actually Jan Logie said, the... Um, the spirit of the nation actually uh, um, deteriorate, drops a bit if the, if the All Blacks lose. So hopefully um, the best thing we can do is wish them best and hope they don't lose so that we can continue to carry on in the next four years uh, in a positive frame of mind. Certainly uh, the, the years 91, 95, uh, 99, 2003, 2007 were some of the saddest of my life because we couldn't claim ourselves to be the world champions uh, in rugby. So I wish the All Blacks all the best. Thank you.